heaviness of heart and you too you say but where my sadness comes from perhaps your mind is sailing with your ships on the wide ocean worrying about their safety makes you sad no i am not anxious about my ships i have several fleets in different parts of the world they can't all be dangerous. then perhaps you are in love what in love me no not at all to think of such a thing makes me want to <coughs> laugh no, Graciano, I... not in love. Then let's say you're sad. Because you're not married. If that's true, you could easily laugh and jump and say you're married because you're not sad. Now, here come two lovers. Your friend, Bassanio, in love with Portia the wealthiest heiress in Italy, and Lorenzo, in love with Jessica, the daughter of Shylock, the Jew. Two pretty lovers indeed. How are you, Bassanio? Lorenzo, a good it is Jessica, and how are you? Nobody was ever, Graciano. Antonio, my good friend. But what that means? Why do you look so sad? That's the question nobody can answer. Well, Bassanio, you find your friend. I'll be on my way. To meet a pretty little Jessica, no doubt. No doubt. Remember, we meet for supper on the Riyadh. Yes, I'll be there. <laughs> <laughs> my dear Antonio, you don't look well. You bear the weight of the world too heavily on your shoulders. I've never seen you so changed. I think the world is nothing but a stage 
Where do the smart player part? And my part is that one. What's my part? Ah, yeah. Let me play the fur. <laughs> there are two ways to cover your face with the wrinkles of old age. One way is always to be serious and silent and pretend you're a wise old man. The other way is to drink and laugh and be merry. That's the way I'd like to grow old. Play the fool. Not be moon and sigh with sorrow. Play the fool. You always talk too much, Gracia. Hey, come now, both into serious, silent, or the philosopher's pretend. Yes, indeed. If I stay with you any longer, you'll forget how to speak. I'll leave you now. Yes, it's true I talk too much, but that's me. I always play the fool. <laughs> hey, <-ho. laughs> He certainly has the gift of speech. Russian speaks a great deal of... Nothing. <laughs> More than anyone in Venice, but there are so little sense in what he says. It's like looking for a needle in a haystack. Ah, uh, tell me, Bassanio, who is the lady you wish to marry? You promised to tell me about you it. You already know, Antonio, how much money I've spent in seeking marriage with a lady I love. Mm. I owe you much already, but now I'm in debt again. And once more, I come to you for help. Tell me everything, Bassanio. You are an honorable man I know, and all my money and I myself are to service. You are too good to me, Antonio. Having borrowed so much from you already, I hesitate to ask for more. Tell me how I can help you, and I'll do the best I can. Tell me about the lady. She lives in Belmont. When her father died, he left her fortune. She is one of the richest women in Italy. Far ah, more than that, she's beautiful, more beautiful than anyone I've ever seen, and full of purity and virtue. Her eyes seem to speak to me, Antonio, and they are full of speechless messages of love. Her name is Portia. Her uh, beauty is famous not only in Venice and Italy, but in all Europe and even beyond the seas. Many distinguished men, great lords and princes make the journey to Belmont, hoping to marry her. Oh, my Antonio, if only I were great enough to love all these wealthy suitors, I know I could win her love and make her my wife. All my fortune is now invested in ships at sea. I have no ready money that I could lend you, Bassanio, until my ships return to port. But I'll tell you what I can do. I'll make inquiries among money lenders of Venice and see what credit I can raise on your behalf. What money I can find, believe me, my dear friend, it shall be yours. Nothing would give me more joy than to help you win the fair Porsche of Belmont.
little body is weary of this great world. Well, madam, you'd be weary if your sorrows were greater than your good fortune. But as far as I can see, you are one of the luckiest ladies alive. Perhaps you're weary because you are too happy and too wealthy, madam. Rich people grow tired and old more quickly than poor people do. Excellent sentences, and very well pronounced. <laughs> they'd, be, they'd be much better, madam, if you listened to me properly. If only I knew what to do! I can't think of any way I can choose the husband I desire. Oh, dear! That word! Choose! I can neither defeat the man I hate, nor choose the man I love. Don't you see how hard it is for me, Nerissa? I have to follow the will of my dead father. Am I really the luckiest person alive? Your father was a good man, madam. Uh, and so, he made this arrangement of three caskets. Gold, silver, and lead to protect you from danger. By this means, you can be sure to find a husband whom you love and who truly loves you. I sometimes wonder. Tell me, what do you think of the suitors who are here now? Tell their names one by one, and I'll tell you what I think. First, there's the Prince of Napoli. Oh, <laughs> see Napoli and die. He's not a man, he's a horse. He does nothing but talk about horses all day long. I think one of his ancestors must have been a horse. Then, there's the Palatine Count. Oh, him. He's so serious. He never smiles. If you tell him a funny story, he frowns and frowns. Just like a frog with a headache. <laughs> I'd rather marry a statue of Socrates than either of those two. How about the French Lord, Monsieur Le Bon? Monsieur Le Bon. Bon, bon, bonsoir, monsieur. Bon dieu, mademoiselle, bon dieu. Well, God made him, so at least he's a human being. But he's too active, he never stands still, and he talks like an excited parrot. <laughs> he has more horses than the Prince of Napoli. And he frowns more deeply than the Palatine Count. But he never for more than a few seconds at a time. He frowns, and then he smiles, then he laughs, then he lifts one eyebrow, then he licks his lips, then he <laughs> frowns again. His soul changes. If I married Monsieur Le Bon, I'd rather marry 20 husbands. Well, what do you think of Falcon Bridge? The young baron from England. He speaks nothing but English. <laughs> so he can't understand a word I say. He can't speak, speak Latin, French, or Italian. So whenever we meet, there's no communication at all. He's what? typical. English people never bother to learn foreign languages at all. <laughs> what about MacDonald, the Scottish lord? He's too violent. He fights every man he meets. And when he stops fighting, he spends all his time talking about money. Well, tell me about that German lord, the Duke of Saxony's his nephew. He drinks too much. I hate him in the morning when he's sober. And I hate him even more in the afternoon when he's drunk. He's like more than, more like an animal than a human being. If he chooses the right casket, madam, you'll have to marry him. If you refuse, you'll disobey your father as well. I'll never do that. Whatever happens, I'll obey my father. I tell you what, Nerissa, put a large glass of German wine on the wrong casket. He likes wine so much, he's sure to choose that one. <laughs> I'll do anything, Nerissa, rather than marry a sponge. <laughs> 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 
Well, madam, you needn't worry about any of these laws. They've all decided to go back home unless they can win you by some means other than these caskets. They, none of them is willing to marry you according to your father's will. I'm not permitted to marry any man unless he first chooses the right casket. Whatever happens, I'll obey my father. But I must say, I'm extremely glad these foreign shooters have decided to go back home. I wish them all bon voyage. Especially Monsieur Le Bon. Bon voyage. Bonsoir. <laughs> <laughs> Do you remember that splendid young man from Venice? A most highly educated gentleman and a soldier, I yes. think. Yes. Yes. <laughs> it was Bassanio, wasn't it? Is that the man you mean? Yes, madame. You know very well who I mean. Of all of the men who have ever been here hoping to marry you, marry you, he, <clears throat> in my opinion, is the most suitable to marry a beautiful lady. I remember him well. Oh, there's Belle. <coughs> the six suitors are ready to take the lead, madam. Thank heaven for that. And a new suitor has arrived. The Prince of Morocco. Morocco? Where is that? In Africa, isn't it? Yes, he's a grown man. A grown man? <laughs> well, does it change? I wish I could welcome him as eagerly as I say goodbye to the other six. I need your support. <laughs> Sovereigns. Well? Yes, sir. 3,000 sovereigns for three months. For three months. <coughs> well? And as I told you, the merchant Antonio, Venice here, will provide the security. Antonio, the merchant. Yes, I know him well. Will provide the security. Well? Will you lend the money? 3,000 sovereigns for three months, and Antonio will provide the security. What is your answer? Antonio is a good man. Have you heard anything to the contrary? Oh, no, 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 no. My meaning in saying he is a good man is to have you understand his money is good. He has several fleets at sea, I understand. One bound for Tripoli, another bound for the Indies, yet another for Mexico, and a fourth for England. Am I right? Oh yes, Antonio is a good man. Three thousand sovereigns, is it? Yes, I think he may be trusted. Indeed he may. I will be sure that I may trust him. And in order to be sure, may I speak with Antonio? By all means. I expect him here at any moment. Will you dine with us tonight? You Christians eat pork, <laughs> the meat of devils. And I and the people of my nation cannot bear the smell of pork. I will buy with you, I will walk with you, sell with you, talk with you but I will not pray with you, or drink with you, or eat with you.
This is my friend, the merchant Antonio. I hate him, for he is a Christian. But I hate him for another reason also. He lends money in Venice without interest. And that is not good for genuine money lenders such as myself. I cannot charge high rates of interest on my loans. But if I can catch him now, it will satisfy the grudge I bear him. He hates all the Jewish people as a race, and for that I will never forgive him. Shylock, did you hear me? This is Antonio. I am considering what you have asked me. There may be some difficulty in raising 3,000 sovereigns at such short notice. I need time. I must think it over. How do you do, sir? Sheriff, it is not my custom to lend or borrow interest, but to help my friend Passanio, I'll break the custom. Have you ever discussed the details? Yes, 3,000 sovereigns. For three months? Yes, I'd almost forgotten for three months. Well then, your security. Let me see. 3,000 sovereigns for three months. Will you make a contract? Antonio, often on the Rialto, you have spoken ill of me about my money lending. You have called me a Jewish heathen and spat upon my coat. Now you need my help. You need my money, yet you treat me like a dog. Can a dog lend money? You spat on me last Wednesday, and today I must lend you money. I may have occasion to spit on you like a shark. If you lend me money, you need to lend me as a friend, but as an enemy, and if that enemy fails to pay his debt, when the time comes, then you'll get your revenge with greater satisfaction. I, 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 you need not be so angry. I'd like to be your friend. I'd like to lend you money and forget uh, the insults. Uh, you don't need to be angry. Please accept my kindness. I suppose it is a kind of kindness. Go with me now to a lawyer in the city. Let us draw up a contract. As a kind of... As a kind of joke, <coughs> let's say that if you do not pay me back my three thousands at the end of the three months, you shall give me, as forfeit, one pound weight of your Christian flesh to be cut off from whatever part of your body I choose. I'm quite willing to humor this joke of yours. I have no objection to such an offer. I agree, Shylock. If I break the contract, you shall have your pound of flesh. No, Antonio. This isn't a joke at all. It's too dangerous. I can let you risk your life for me. There's no danger, Bassanio. Within two months, all my ships will be safely home. I'll be able to pay the debt nine times over. Uh, Father Abraham, how little trust these Christians have. Tell me, Bassanio, if Antonio fails to repay his debt, what's my advantage? What can I do with one pound of human flesh? It is much worth than a pound of beef or mutton. We cannot eat it. Therefore, you must accept my conditions. Otherwise, I'll say good day to you and let you take your leave. Sherlock, I accept your conditions and will assign your contract to that effect. Then meet me at the city lawyer's office. Let him draw up the contract with this <laughs> merry little joke about the pound of flesh. <laughs> I'll go and collect the money. That's a lawyer's yes, office. Bye, Antonio and Vasalia. Thank you, Sherlock. Yes. The gentle Jew. Perhaps may... he'll become a Christian one day. He may seem present, Antonio, but at heart he's an absolute villain. I don't like him. I don't trust him. Yes, sir, my Bassanio. My ships will be safely home in Venice.
not despise me for the my for the color of my skin, dear madam. My blood is as red as any man from cooler countries in the north. My face is fierce. But I am just capable of gentle human emotions. I can even feel fear. Brave, heroic man, terrify me. In my own country, the ladies love me for my color, madam. I will not change this dark skin of mine except to win your heart. I have no power to choose my husband. And my father's will forbids me to make any choice of my own. For this reason, sir, you are as excellent a man to be my future husband as any I have met. The color of your skin does not offend me in the least. For that, I thank you, madam. Now, if you please, lead me to these three caskets and let me try my fortune. By this scimitar of mine, <gasps> I will dare the bravest hero! Oh, 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 oh. The royal <laughs> To win this delicious lady as my bride. You must take your chance, sir. And either not attempt to, to choose at all, or swear that if your choice is wrong, You'll never speak to me again on the subject of marriage. And leave this house immediately. I understand. I'm swear. Nerissa, show him the casket. Now, sir, make your choice. <laughs> First is made of gold. And this who chooses me shall gain what many men desire. The second is silver. And make this promise. Who chooses me shall get as much as he deserves. The third. The red has this blunt warning. Who chooses me must hazard everything he has. How shall I know of which one to choose? One of them contains my picture, sir. If you choose that one, I shall become your wife. <laughs> <laughs> May God direct my judgment. <laughs> Let me see. I read the inscriptions once again. Who chooses me must hazard everything he has. Hazard. Give. Risk. Everything. For what? May I let? No. This casket threatens me with danger. No, I will not hazard anything for lead. What does the civil one say? Who chooses me shall get as much he deserves. As much as he deserves. Let me pause here. <laughs> Perhaps I deserve much, but that may not include this beautiful lady Portia. Let me look at the gold one. <laughs> Who chooses me shall gain what many men desire. Why? It is the lady. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Indeed, what I desire is the lady Portia. All the world desires her. They come from all the four corners of the world to kiss this shrine, this perfect saint of beauty. One of the casket contains a picture. Is it the leather one? No. Lead is too rough. 
too cheap a metal to contain such beauty as this. Silver, too, is much, much less valuable than gleaming gold. Yes, here, here in this golden casket I shall find her picture. This is my choice. If my picture's there, then I am yours. I pray you, sir, open the casket. Oh, hell! <laughs> what are we here? <laughs> oh, God, love death with a scroll of paper in its empty eye. Let me read it. All that glitters is not gold. <laughs> Often you have heard that told many a foolish man has sold his life and spirit to behold the empty brilliance of gold. Vile worms decay and rotten mold are only find in its tombs of gold. Had you been half as wise as bold, this answer would not be inscrolled. <laughs> Fare you well, your hope is cold. Cold in the <laughs> oh, it's lost! Porsche, dearest lady, farewell. <laughs> <laughs> My heart is too full of sorrow to say anything more. Farewell. Shadok. You and look like, like a real flint. It's amazing what a little money can do. A great deal of money, Graciano. But this, but, but not this. I'm presentable enough to marry Portia if I can win her. Bassanio, I have a favor to ask of you. Oh, it's a pleasure. What can I do? When you go to Belmont to visit Portia, let me go with you. But why should you want to go to Belmont? For the same reason as you, but not for the same lady. Ah, I think I know what you mean. Yes, and I think you know the lady too. Who? 
you mean Portia's maid servant, Nerissa. Nerissa, <laughs> the most perfect angel that ever stepped upon the surface of the earth. Let me come with you. By all means. But one condition. One condition? What condition? Graciano, that? you talk too much. You are too wild, too rude, too bold in the way you speak. <laughs> with me and with our friend here in Venice, these things don't matter at all. But with strangers, well, you may offend them by talking too much and too loudly. I'm worried what might... But sir, listen. I'll wear modest clothes. I'll talk politely and stop swearing completely. <laughs> well, almost. I'll stop drinking, I'll carry a Bible, and sigh and say amen as often as possible. I'll behave perfectly. I can, you know, if I try. If I don't, never trust me again. Well, I believe it when I see. At Belmont, you see, you won't recognize me. I'll be so gentle. A real gentleman. Very well. <laughs> oh, here comes Lorenzo. Hello, dreamer. <laughs> Is that the love letter you're reading? Show me. Ah, from the divine Jessica. Get me. Luciano. Listen, I'll tell you everything. Tonight, Jessica and I are going to escape from Venice forever. When it's dark, she'll leave her father's ass in disguise. I don't blame her. It must be terrible having a father like Shiloh. He's so mean with his money. But he likes lending it to people. With interest. Yes, he's very interested in interest. <laughs> more interest, more interest. <laughs> and then, Lorenzo, as soon as we can, We'll get married. And live happily ever after. My gosh! <laughs> you lucky man. I wish you all the best. Take care, Lorenzo. Her father's a vicious man. I hope you are not to discover Shylock will murder you if he catches you. Once we are at your bench, he won't be able to touch us. A good luck, Lorenzo. You'll need it. Shylock's a dangerous man. Jessica? Jessica? Jessica! Tess is on the little devil. Why doesn't she answer? Jessica! Do you hear me? Do what I tell you! What is it, Father? Why didn't you come when I called you? I was upstairs, sorting clothes. You shouldn't keep me waiting. I'm a busy man. Sorry, Father. Listen. Tonight, I'm going to have dinner with that Christian devil merchant, Antonio. We're not friends. I hate him. But I'm going to eat with him against my principles in order to make him spend his money on me. Listen, Jessica, take care of the house while I'm out. Here are the keys. Keep all the doors locked, Jessica. Don't let anyone in. I feel some danger in the air. And last night I dreamt of money bags. That's always a bad sign. Keep all the doors and windows locked. Don't let anyone in and don't you go out. I feel a fear, Jessica. I think I'd better change my mind and not go out after all. Don't, don't be out, that, Father. You go out and enjoy Antonio's dinner. <laughs> enjoy? <laughs> Not enjoy, endure. <laughs> the idea of eating with a Christian makes me sick. The only pleasure I'll get out of it is the knowledge that Antonio's paying for everything I eat and drink. Keep inside, Jessica. I will not be out long. Don't forget what I told you. Good night, Father. When I said good night, I meant goodbye. Perhaps.
Perhaps I'll never see my father again. But that's not too hard to bear. Alas, it must be wrong of me to be ashamed to be my father's daughter. Though I'm the daughter of his flesh, I'm not the daughter of his mind. Oh, Lorenzo, come soon and take me away. Then I'll become a Christian like you and be a loving wife. I must hurry. This guy's not a page boy. No one will recognize me. You needn't worry. Shiloh is gone to have dinner with Antonio and Bassania. That's most convenient for Jessica and me. But I still Convenient? Have... It's an epoch-making event, man. That old Jew feasting with the good Christian Antonio. Perhaps Shiloh can become a Christian. Never! <laughs> Shiloh, the true Jew, true and true. He never change. He's only eating Antonio's food because he doesn't have to pay for it. He'd like to wring Antonio dry, make him bankrupt. That would be difficult. Antonio is the richest merchant in Venice. Time, Graciano. Time for Jessica to leave the house. Jessica, are you there? Who is it? Tell me your name. It is I, Lorenzo, your devoted lover. Lorenzo? <laughs> yes, it is you, my dear. And here I am. But can you believe that? This, this is your little Jessica who loves you. Now, you have the appearance of handsome young boy. But your voice, Jessica, is Jessica's dear, gentle voice. And your heart, too, is always yours. But soon, it shall be yours, forever. Quick, take this casket. These are the best of my father's jewels. Now, I must go back and lock the doors. Why, this is a brave and gentle girl, Lorenzo. And certainly, she's not a Jew. I'm overcome with admiration. I love her, Graciano. She's not only beautiful to my eyes, but she's wise too. And true of heart, I love her forever. I can well be it believe. Here, oh, here she comes. Take this money too. Let's escape as quickly as we can. I'm terrified. My father will come before we can get away. There's nothing to fear. You're beautiful and brave, my dear heart. Once we are to Venice, we shall be safe, safe, happy, and free. I choose Jame Jame. The second, do sit home. If I pay to choose collectoré, Jame to speak to you again over mariage. Never, not once, not again. Et la dernière, if la fortune does not smile upon me, immediately 
tout de suite, tout départ, tout de cette maison, on sait adieu. <laughs> These three promises are the best three keep dans mon cœur, in my heart. First on the casket, a uh, noble prince. If you choose correctly, our marriage ceremony will be performed without delay. My heart is full of l'espoir. <laughs> the gold, the silver, and the plain lead. <laughs> Who chooses me must hazard everything he has. No, 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 that box. <laughs> you must have this splendid aspect before I hazard or that I have proof boo. Now, here's the golden casket. Let me see. <laughs> Who chooses me shall gain what many men desire. Bok de zom, many men, to the monde. That many may signify all the foolish common people in the world. They soap, food, judge, everything only by the outward splendor. No, 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 I will not choose what many men desire. Pask, because I not soil my noble spirit by touching the common man. Well, well then, I'll need to leave this Shirabamo. Who chooses me shall get as much as he deserved. Now, le bon mot vient dit that well said. Whoever seeks l'honneur et la good fortune, why such a man must never pretend to possess undeserved dignity? No, no, no. Too many men in the society receive their honors through corruption than the society. True honor and respect must be obtained by the merit, by what a man deserved. Voila! Voici que je suis dit, here is my choice. <laughs> Who chooses me shall get as much as he deserved. The silver casket. This one, I play you. Don't let moi. <laughs> 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 you pose too long, sir. <laughs> <laughs> What's here, mon dieu? The portrait of the blinking idiot? Un portrait? No, no. This is not like Portia at all. <laughs> Quelle différence. <laughs> Hélas. Now, what was I here? Quel mot? Quel mot? Some there that only kiss shadows. They have only bristles of shadows and a mocking hiss. Learn from this analysis. There are fools like this with silver minds, all are miss. Fool, patron, idiot, pourquoi? Why did I choose this silver casket? <laughs> I am a more great fool than this fool's head. <laughs> and now, the more long I remain here, the more foolish I appear. I came here with one fool's head, but now I depart with two. <laughs> Adieu, my <laughs> sweetest lady. I'll keep my promises and suffer my loss as much with the patience as I can. C'est triste, c'est trop triste, mais c'est la vie, c'est la vie. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. They are so full of false philosophies they, before they choose. And after they have chosen, 
how miserable they feel. They say that death by hanging <coughs> and finding a wife are both decided by destiny, my dear. Oh, if only this according to the longing of my heart. <coughs> a visitor, go and see who it is. Venetian gentleman brings news that his master, also from Venice, will soon be here, bringing with him choice gifts for you, madame. Oh, what a fine young Venetian he is. As a fresh as a spring morning that comes before the glorious flowers of summer, as a sweet as a warm April before the heat of June. How poetic you've suddenly become, there is <laughs> You praise this young Venetian too much. What is his master's name? I'm sure you know as well as I do, madam, who I mean. His master's name is none other than Bassanio. Ah, so I do! And who is the young Venetian waiting outside? And who fills you with such, a, such passionate seasonal poetry? His name is Graciano. Oh, Graciano, what a man! Graciano! <laughs> <laughs> Delicious indeed! Everyone's talking about it. While Shiloh was at dinner in my house last night, his daughter ran away with her lover, Lorenzo. They vanished from things. Furthermore, I hear that Jessica has taken most of her father's jewels and money. Silence in a frenzy of passion. He's rushing about the face from bridge to bridge, crying out, My daughter, my jewels, my money, but... Oh, my daughter, friend with a Christian, my Christian money, but... Oh, my daughter! Justice! Justice! The law! My money! My money! <laughs> it's like the end of the world, as if the day of judgment has dawned. Shylock, as much as the winter wind. But it doesn't change his character. He loves his daughter. But it's quite clear that he loves his money more than a sign of my daughter yet! <laughs> She's not in Venice, that's sure. Nobody has heard anything or they won't tell me. Curses on the ungrateful child. My own flesh and blood. My own daughter stealing away like this from her kind father and taking the best of my wealth. She's nothing but a common thief. Now people will mock me for this. They'll laugh at me and scorn me because my daughter's run away with half my jewels and my money. And that self-satisfied smiling merchant Antonio, how he smiles and smiles at my misfortune. But I'll find a way to catch him out. A pound of his Christian flesh, I'll have it, I'll have it, and then... <sighs> what can I do with it? If I were a beast, I could eat it. But as I'm human, I cannot eat it. It's no use to me at all. Useless trash. But at least it will feed my revenge. There's no man in the world I hate so much as I hate Antonio. He scorns my Jewish nation, the land of Moses. And why does he do that? Because I am a Jew. And what is a Jew? Doesn't a Jew have eyes, as all men have? Doesn't a Jew have hands, arms, and body, as all men have? Doesn't a Jew have thoughts, feelings, and passions, just as all men have? Don't they eat food, fight with the same weapons, suffer from the same diseases, recover by the same means? Aren't they warmed and cooled by the same winter and summer as Christians are? 
If you cut a Jew's hand, doesn't it bleed red blood? If you tickle us, don't we laugh? If you poison us, don't we die? And if you wrong us, don't we desire revenge? If we Jews are like Christians in everything else, we will be like them in revenge also. If a Jew wrongs a Christian, what does a Christian desire? Revenge. If a Christian wrongs a Jew, then what does that Jew desire? Why, revenge. So be it. Let that villain Antonio slip one inch outside the law. Let him break a single word of his contract. And I will have him in the power of my hands. And then, then, then I will have my revenge. Ah, Deborah, <gasps> sister. Have you any news of Jessica and the money? None, Shylock. People say she's gone to Mantua with that Christian dog, Lorenzo. Ah, Mantua. Our father's house is ruined. A curse has fallen upon our nation. They've stolen half my wealth. That precious diamond, Deborah, the one I bought in Frankfurt. 7,000 sovereigns it cost me, and now it's gone. I feel as if my heart had been torn from my body. That diamond was the Lord King of all my jewels. They say that Jessica is spending money like a millionaire, Shylock. A hundred sovereigns. One hundred sovereigns in a single night. The choicest food, musicians to entertain them, torchbearers to guide them through the street. Oh, brother, I can't bear it. I can't bear the shame. Uh -huh. Our family name is laughed at in the public places, Deborah. Dragged in the mud and slime. And that's the worst of it. To think of all those sly Christians laughing at our misfortune. May the Lord God of Israel strike them down! But listen, Shylock, I have this other news to comfort you about Antonio's ships. What? What? I was glad to hear that one was lost in a storm. Not one! Three! Three of his best ships are lost at sea, and two of his other fleets are scattered in the Atlantic gale. Good, 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 good. good. Three ships. Complete scattered, are you sure of it? Oh, as sure of it as the Lord God created the heavens and the earth. I spoke to some of the sailors who escaped the wreck. They think all the fleets are lost. All of them? Ah, that's good news. The Lord is helping us to get revenge. I thank you, God above. Hear my prayers. Increase the storms across the seas. <laughs> Sink all Antonio's ships, wreck them all upon the rocks and shoals. Hear us in our misery, O oh Lord. Antonio's creditors are gathering in the San Marcos Piazza. He'll never be able to pay the money he owes them. He'll be ruined. And he'll not be able to pay me either. The three months is almost up. He'll break his contract. Pray God he'll be declared bankrupt, and then I'll have my revenge to pay for my power. Ah, Deborah, the news you bring is music to my ears. But first, we have to try and find Jessica ah. and bring her back to Venice. Ungrateful child, all that gold, I'll never see it again, and those priceless diamonds. My very soul is wrenched in two by this conflicting news. First, my daughter eloped with a Christian. That's bad enough. Then my gold and diamonds gone, that's what hurts the most. But now this comforting news of Antonio's losses at sea. My heart bleeds for my money, but to bring about the death of Antonio the merchant will comfort my soul. Let us go. Let us go to the synagogue, Shylock. Let us pray to the Lord God to curse all the Christians and to wipe them from the face to of the, the earth. To the synagogue, sister, the God of the Hebrews will not fail us in our distress.
It is not love. Tells me I would be sorry to lose you. And you yourself, I'm sure, feel something. Something not unlike the working of my mind. Why not stay here for a month or two before you choose? I could tell you which casket to choose. But then I'd break the promise made to my father. And if I break my promise, you will lose me. One half of me is already yours. The other half is mine. But if you win me, then I am all yours. I speak too much, I know, but that's because I hope to lengthen the time before you choose. Let me choose now, Portia. Every moment of suspense tortures my mind and heart. Let me try my fortune in the casket. I cannot prevent you. Choose them. I may be found in one of them. If you truly love me, you'll find me, that I'm certain of. Nerissa and good friend Grosjean, stand aside, I pray. Let music sound while he makes his choice. Then, if he chooses wrongly, he'll make a swan-like end, fading in music.
in a human face is nothing but an ornament that hides the skull of death. Thus, ornament is like a calm shore beyond which lies a dangerous sea. Therefore, you, Goldie Gold, heartless food of Midas, I'll keep my hands away from you. And you, you silver slave, who serve as common money, changing hand from day to day, I'll not touch you either. But, You, simple lad, without a trace of ornament, your plainness moves me far more than all the splendor of silver or gold. Therefore, I choose you, and may this lead me to joy. Doubt, despair, fear, and envy. All these dark passions have melted from my heart, and now I feel nothing but the ecstasy of love. Oh, love, be moderate! The joy is too great to bear. What do I find here? You that choose not by the view, chance as fair and choose as true. Since this fortune favors you, be content and seek no new. If you are now well pleased with this, deceive your lady, live in peace. Gentle words. Fair lady, if you give me leave, I come to claim you as my loving bride. But yet, even though I know I won this joy, but I cannot believe my fortune till I hear you say it true. You see me, Lord Bassanio, here I stand. But such as I am, I wish I were a thousand times better. So I might be worthy of your goodness. I am nothing but simple, untutored girl. So teach me that I may learn how to become a woman fit to be your wife. Direct me as you will, for all that I am and all that's mine is now Hello. yours. My house, my lands and gardens, and I myself, all I own, are yours. You are their master and my master. I give them with this ring. If 
ever you should lose the res this ring, Masayo, imagine, it will bring the ruin of your love. Madam, you have loved me of all worlds. I cannot speak. All speech has turned into nothing but perfect joy. Expressed, yet not expressed. If ever this ring should leave this finger, then life itself will leave my heart, and then you may truly say, Basarius, then. My lord and the lady, we have stood by and the seen who wishes for you both come true. Now it's time to wish you joy. Good joy, my lord and the lady. My lord Bassanio and my gentle lady, I wish you all the joy that you can wish. And when the time comes to celebrate your marriage, I beg you to let me hold my wedding too. With all my heart. But first, you must find out why. <laughs> I thank you, Lord Bassanio. You yourself have found me one. My eyes can see things as swiftly as yours can. You saw the mistress. I saw the maid. Our fortunes have followed the same path. Your fortune depended on the casket there. So did mine. Nerissa said she wouldn't be my wife unless you chose the right casket and won the lady potion. Is this true, Nerissa? Yes, madam, <laughs> if you please. Are you and Graciano in earnest? <laughs> Will you be faithful to one another? We'll be faithful and true our forever. Wedding. Our wedding feast will, will be all the more joyful if we share it with yours. Let's make a bet on which of us shall first become a father. <laughs> <laughs> Who comes here? Lorenzo and Jessica, the Jew's daughter. Welcome, Lorenzo and Jessica, too. You come here at a happy time. Sweet Portia, with your permission, I'll welcome these two as my friends, Lorenzo and Jessica. Your friends are my friends. They are entirely welcome. I thank you both. What brings you this way, Lorenzo? I'm sure you had no plan to visit Belmont. We thought you were in Mantua. That was our plan. But as we left Venice, we had such serious news. I thought I should come here as soon as possible. Bad news? Tell us quickly. Is Antonio well? As well in health as he can be in his situation, but not to well in fortune. All his ships are lost at sea. At first, it was said that only one ship was wrecked in a storm. But since then, it turned out worse than anyone imagined. Every ship is lost. His entire fortune. Dear Sposha, this is indeed terrible news. Now I must tell you why. This loss is great blow to Antonio, but all the more so because of me. When I first met you, Portia, I told you I was poor and worth nothing. I should have told you more. I was worth than nothing. Whatever wealth I had came from Antonio's kindness. He bought money from Sherlock for me, a very large sum. The security lay with his merchant ships at sea. But now they are all lost. Is this really true, Lorenzo? Every ship? There's no hope, Bassanio. At every point of the compass, the Atlantic is wild with storms. My heart breathes for Antonio, the best friend I ever had. How much does he owe Sherlock? Three thousand sovereigns. What? Only that? That can be easily settled. <laughs> Nerissa, go and finish my keys. We'll pay Sherlock ourselves. That won't help, madam. What do you mean? That's why this news is so shocking, Portia. Shylock made a condition in his contract with Antonio. If Antonio himself failed to pay his debt in three months, 
And that now, he had a right to claim one pound of Antonio's fresh. Things are even worse. Sherlock has already been to the Duke of Venice and asked him to hold a trial. Antonio has been arrested and he is now in prison. The trial is to be held the day after tomorrow. such kind of gentle people, we'd be more than happy to share our joys with you all. It shall be so. Farewell, Bassanio, till we meet again. And you, Nerissa, till we meet again. I shall go to Venice too, Gracie. to help Bassanio. Gracian, my dearest love, bear this ring of mine as token of our faith, and never let it leave your finger, or else you'll lose my love. <laughs> A charming echo of the Lady Porter's greater church to Lord Bassanio. Farewell. I'll wear this ring forever. Farewell, my dearest love. May all go well. Nerissa, take the keys and give my lord what capital he needs to satisfy Sarah's demands. Fifty times over. A thousand thanks, dear love. We are deeply grateful for your great kindness, madam. And if you knew how good a man Antonio is and what a devoted friend he is to Bassanio, you'd be so much the happier for having helped him. I'm glad indeed to have this chance to help my husband. And now, Lorenzo, let me ask your help. Your purpose is, you say, to make your way to Bantu? That's a hope, madam. I have friends there. And friends here, too. Let me persuade you to remain here. While my lords Bassanio and Graciano are away in Venice, Nerissa and I intend to take my leave, to live in prayer and meditation for a while, until our lords return. And now, with Jessica to help you to manage all the business of this house while we are gone. Madam, it will be a pleasure to act as guardian in these beautiful surroundings. We will not betray our trust. Thank you, Lorenzo. And now, till Nerissa and I depart, I urge you both to walk at will through all the rooms and gardens at your leisure. Here comes Nerissa. I have business with her. We will take our leave. We well, thanks, madam, for all your kindness. There is. I have made a plan which you and I must carry out in haste. We must hurry and follow our husbands at a distance. Shall we meet them? They'll see us, but they won't know who we are. First, we must visit an old friend of mine. Dr. Ferrario, the most respected lawyer in Italy. He lend us books and girls to wear and prepare an introduction letter. Girls to wear? What are you planning, madam? Sherlock, I'm sure. 
will never accept the money offered him. He'd rather see the death of that good merchant of Venice, Antonio, my husband's friend. So what shall we do, mother? You and I are going to Venice, Nerissa, to save Antonio's life. Can you act like a man? Deepen your voice a little. Walk with a swagger. <laughs> act like a man? How? I tell you, on the way to Venice. But, but how can we save Antonio's life? I've thought of a way. And with your help, we'll succeed. <laughs> Is the merchant Antonio here? Yes, Your Grace. Here, and prepare to receive judgment. You have my sympathy. You've come here to answer a cold-hearted man, an inhuman enemy, incapable of pity. Shylock will show you no mercy. I am sorry, indeed, that such a case as this has come before the court. I have heard, Your Grace. You have tried to soften Shylock's heart. But that nothing can change him. I am prepared to meet his hatred with patience and suffer with the quietness of spirit. Let the Jew be called into the court. him stand before me. <laughs> Shylock, the world thinks, and I think so too, that you intend to keep this hatred in your heart until the final act begins. And then we all believe, at the last moment of all, you'll change your mind and show mercy. Although you now demand the fulfillment of your contract, which is to receive a pound of this good merchant's flesh, we hope and believe that you will not insist on the terms of the contract, but you will allow the debt to remain unsettled and will feel some pity for this gentleman's great loss, which weighs so heavily on his mind. We all expect a gentle answer, Jew. I have informed your grace of my purpose, and by the holy Jewish Sabbath, I have sworn to see my contract legally fulfilled. If you deny me this, the freedom of this city has no integrity or meaning, and your own position as Duke <coughs> will stand in danger. You'll ask me why I'd rather have a pound of flesh rather than 3,000 sovereigns. I'll not answer. But you may say that is how I feel. Does that answer satisfy you? 
Suppose my house is troubled with a rat. And suppose I choose to spend 10,000 sovereigns to have that rat removed. Am I compelled to give you a reason? Some people cannot bear cats. Others hate pigs or the sound of a violin. But they cannot tell you why they hate such things. So too, I can give this court no reason why I want my pound of flesh rather than my 3,000 sovereigns. All I can say is that I hate Antonio. And for that reason, I demand the fulfillment of my contract. Is that a sufficient answer? No! That's no answer at all. You heard you had written men. It is no way just by your cruelty. I am in no way obliged to please you with my answer. No man kills that things they don't write. Does any man not hate the thing he wants to kill? No, to every old man deserves hatred. What? Would you let a snake bite you twice? I beg you not to continue talking with this Jew. You might as well go and stand on shore, ask the waves to stop lowering. You might as well ask a Earth not to attack a trembling lamb. You might as well ask pine trees to make no sound of movement when they are blasted in a storm. You might as well try any harder things than these. But you'll never soften the hardness of his Jewish heart. Furthermore, I beg you, make no further efforts to move him. Let me have judgment and let the Jew be satisfied. For your 3,000 sovereigns, here is 6,000. If every sovereign were divided into six, and if each of the six parts were worth a sovereign, I would not accept them. I would rather have my contract. How can you ever hope for mercy, Jew, since you have no mercy? If I do not break the law, what should I fear? You yourself have many slaves. You bought them with money to serve you for nothing. Shouldn't I ask you to set them free and let them marry your sons and daughters? Let them sleep in soft beds like yours? But you will answer that the slaves are yours, and they must serve you. So I tell you, my pound of flesh is bought at high cost. It is mine, and I will have it. If you deny me, your authority is nothing, and there's no power in the laws of Venice. I stand here for legal judgment. Answer, am I to have it? I have the authority to dismiss this court, and I will do so unless I hear from that most respected lawyer, Dr. Bellario. I have sent for him to come and judge this case, but as yet, I have not heard his answer. My lord, I am informed that the young crowd is waiting in the outer court. He has a letter from Dr. Bellario. Why has he not been brought before the court? Let him come in at once. Be cheerful, Antonio. Have courage. This Jew shall have my flesh, blood, bones, and all before he get one drop of blood from you. And secrecy be broke. More suitable for this. The weakest fruit on the tree is always the first to fall. So let me. The best thing you can do, Bassanio, is to stay alive and write the story of my life. Have you come from Padua, from Dr. Bellario? From, from both, my lord. <laughs> my lord Bellario sends greetings to your grace and this letter.
Why are they sat on your nice short Caffrey? To cut what's owing from that bankrupt there. There's no knight in the world at the shop at the edge of your envy, too. Can no words soften your heart? No words of yours. Your wit has no edge. You damn! Despicable dog! You don't have a human soul, only the savage heart of a wolf! Your loud words are powerless to move me, but they may offend others. Control your tongue, young man. I'm here on a matter of the law. This letter from Dr. Bellario recommends a young doctor of law to this court. Where is he? In the outer court, your grace. He's waiting for your answer. Will you admit him? By all means. Go fetch him and bring him before the court. <laughs> Meanwhile, leave this letter to this assembly. from Rome. Give me your answer. Are you a Balthazar from Bellario? I am, sir. You're welcome. Take your place and proceed. with the particulars of the case now before the court? I am thoroughly acquainted with all the details. Which is the merchant here and which is the Jew? Antonio and Shylock, both stand forward. <clears throat> is your name Shylock? Shylock is my name. Your case is indeed strange. But the law of Venice cannot pre prevent, prevent from proceeding. And you, sir, are in the most dangerous situation. Sorry to the same. Do you admit the terms of the contract? I do. Then, the Jew must be merciful. Why should I be merciful? Tell me that. The quality of mercy is not a strain. It flows from the heart of man. It drops down naturally. 
like gentle rain from heaven upon the earth beneath. It is twice pressed. It presses him that gives and him that takes. In a king, mercy is finer than the crown he wears upon his head. It is enthroned in the very house of kings. Mercy is an attribute of God himself. And when the mercy soften the hard heart of justice, it is most like a true power of God. Therefore, Jew, consider this. Justice itself never leads to salvation. But justice, seasoned with mercy, presses all concerns. I demand the law. I demand the penalty written in the contract. Is Antonio able to pay the debt? Yes. On his behalf, I offer what is owing to the Jew. Twice the amount if it needed, and if that is not sufficient, I'm willingly to pay the sum ten times over. I beg you, sir, to overturn the law of Venice and deprive this cruel devil of his lights. It cannot be. There's no power in Venice to alter the law in such a way. If that should happen once, others will demand the same concessions. The law is fixed and cannot be changed. Ah, you're a wise young judge. I greatly respect your judgment. Allow me, please, to see the contract. Yeah. Yeah. Here it is, most learned doctor. Here it is. Child. You are being offered ten times more than what is owing to you. I have sworn to keep this contract. What, would you make me a liar? Why, this contract has been broken. The date for payment of the debt has passed. It is therefore lawful that the Jew may claim a pound of press to be cut off from nearest the merchant's heart. Sherlock. Be merciful. Take the money that's offered. Let me tear up this contract. You may tear it when the debt is paid. You are a wise young judge. Your exposition of the law is extremely sound. I ask you then to proceed to judgment. I have sworn to keep this contract exactly according to the law. There's no one in the whole world can make me change my mind. I beg the court to execute the law. Give me the judgment. It shall be done. Antonio, prepare your body to receive the knife. An excellent young judge indeed. Everything is ready. Do you have a pair of scales to wear the fresh? Yes. <coughs> Here they are. Ask a doctor to be present to dress a wound in case the merchant should bleed to death. Is that mentioned in the contract? It is not actually stated in the contract, but it would be more charitable of you to have a doctor present. I cannot find it. It is not in the contract. You, merchant, have you anything to say? Only a few words. I am well prepared in mind and in body. Give me your hand, Pasani. Never be sad that I must die like this for you. Since I have lost my wealth, it is far better to die, far better than living in poverty and misery. Send my greetings to your noble wife, Portia, and tell her how I died, as a dear friend to you as ever. And do not grieve that now we must part Forever. Antonio, I have a wife in Belmont who is as dear to me as life itself. But life itself, my dearest wife, and all the world are not more dear to me than you are as a friend. I would willingly to give them all to this devil here to save your life. Your wife would not be too happy if she were to hear you speak such words. I have a wife too whom I love more deeply than words can express. But now, I wish she were an angel in heaven so that she could change the heart of this evil Jew. 
It's a good thing your wife isn't here to hear what you say. Yeah. These Christian husbands would willingly give away their wives to save a friend. I have a daughter. Would she have married a Jew instead of running away with a detested Christian? But enough of that. Proceed. Carry out the sentence. <clears throat> One pound of this merchant's flesh is yours. The court awards it, and the law allows it. An excellent judge indeed. And. You must cut the flesh from this merchant, from nearest the heart. The law allows it, and the court awards it. A most proper sentence. Well then, let me begin. Time's over, and let the Christian go. Not too much haste. The Jew must shall have justice. He shall have nothing but what he asks for, the pound of fresh Brilliant! This is the widest judge the world has ever seen. Therefore, shall prepare to cut off this fresh. Do not shed one drop of blood, and do not cut either more or less than an exact pound. If you take even one gram more or less than is stated in this legal contract, you will be put to death. Fulfill the contract and take the pound of fresh. Now, Shiloh, we've got you in the grip of the law. <laughs> Why does it you hesitate? Take it at your own risk. Give me my 3,000 sovereigns and let me go. I have ready for you. Here it is. He diffused it in this public court. He shall have nothing but justice and his contract. May I not have even my original money? You shall have nothing but your pound of fresh. Take it at your own risk. The law has yet another hold on you. It is stated in the laws of Venice that if an alien subject, such as you are, a being Jew, if such an alien threaten the life of any other citizens, he shall be punished. Half of his goods and money shall be given to the threatened, the other half to the state of Venice. Furthermore, the offender shall be put to death unless the Duke pardon him. It is clear, Sherlock, you shall have threatened the life of Antonio here. Down on your knees! Then, 
and beg the Duke for mercy. I hope he gives you permission to hang yourself, you dog. And you're so poor now, you'll have to borrow a rope from the state. In order that you may see the difference in our attitudes, before you ask me for your life, I pardon you. Half of your wealth shall be given to Antonio the merchant, and the other half to the state of Venice. No, take my life and all! Without my lands and my money, I cannot bear to live. Antonio. What mercy can you show to Sherlock? Give him a nurse to hang himself. <laughs> if it pleases you, my lord duke, I ask that Sherlock be allowed to keep half of his possessions, and the other half I'd like to give to Lorenzo, the gentleman who is to marry Sherlock's daughter Jessica. Two further things. I ask that Sherlock, in return for this favor, should become a Christian, and also make a will that when he dies, his son-in-law and daughter, Lorenzo and Jessica, shall inherit everything he owns. He shall do this, or else I'll renounce the pardon I have given him. Are you satisfied, Jew? What have you to say? I am satisfied. Clark, draw up the deed of gift. Give me permission to leave. I'm not well. Send the deed after me and I will sign it. Leave immediately. Be sure you sign the deed. I invite you to my palace for dinner this evening. I thank your grace for your great kindness. But please excuse me. I must return to old Berario tonight. And I'll have to leave immediately. Oh, I'm sorry that you don't have the leisure to accept my invitation. Antonio. Revolve this young gentleman well. He saved your life. The court is dismissed. Most worthy, sir. 
My friend Antonio and I have been released today from great danger. In recognition of your great skill in settling this affair, we freely offer you the 3,000 sovereigns, Antonio or the Jew. And more than that, we owe your eternal gratitude and thanks. If you are satisfied with the outcome, that is all the payment I need. To see your freedom now is unprepayment. All I ask is that you greet me if ever we should meet again. And so, I take my leave. Oh, good sir, I must insist you receive a proper token of gratitude. Please, accept the money we offer. You press me, sir. And so, I must accept your kindness. But not the money. Give me instead the ring you are wearing. My ring? <laughs> good sir. This is of too little value to give you as a gift. I will accept nothing but this. Please give me your ring. Although I said it is of little value, to me this ring has special meaning and personal value. I'll give you the most splendid ring that money can buy in Venice, but I cannot depart from this one. I question your sincerity. You offer me much money, but you'll not give me a mere ring. This, uh, good sir, this ring was given to me by my wife, and when she put it on my finger, she made me swear I never part from it. Neither give it away, nor sell it, nor lose it. That's a good excuse. Many people say the same thing. <laughs> when they want to keep something, they treasure. If your wife knew how much I deserved this ring, she wouldn't hesitate to let me have it. And so, farewell to you both. My lord Bassanio, let him have the ring. I myself explain, Portia, how and why you can give it away. For you, Antonio. Please. I, I'll give him the ring. Graciano, now after the young doctor, and give him the ring. Mm. And once more, give him our thanks. Bastanio, come home with me for dinner. Uh, most gladly. And after that, let boss make haste to return to Belmont. And uh, pause. has changed his mind. Here's his ring. <laughs> his gift to you, since he asked for it so earnestly. Most thankfully, I accept it, sir. Please tell your Lord Bassanio how glad I am. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have some fun with this later. I wonder what Bassanio will say. Now I'll try to make Graciano give me his ring. <laughs> <laughs> Sir, I pray you, walk a little way with us. Show us a little of Venice before we depart for home. With pleasure, sir. We'll show you the Rialto. Thank you, sir. Tell me, that's a very fine ring you are wearing. Where did you get it? It was a gift from my wife. Nothing is more dear to me. Do you let me see it again? We just take it off for a moment. And let me hold this up to the light. Uh, you, you may look at it with pleasure, sir, but I can't let you keep we'll it. We'll soon see about that. <laughs> <laughs>
moon shines brightly on such a night as this, when the sweet wind gently kisses the trees, Troy that sits on the walls of Troy and sigh towards the Grecian tent where Cressida lay asleep. On such a night, the gentle Sicily, full of fear, stepped on the dewy grass and seeing the lion's shadow in the moonlight run like a deer into the darkness of the wood. On such a night, holding a willow branch in her hand, forsaken Dido stood on the wild seashore, longing for her lover Aeneas to come again to Carthage. On such a night, the youthful Romeo sent golden messages, flying like blue-winged bird to Juliet on her balcony. On such a night, the pretty Jessica ran secretly from Venice and her Jewish father's house as far as Vermont. On such a night, the handsome young Lorenzo mm -hmm. saw he loved his little Jessica. On such a night, <laughs> <laughs> and here we are in Vermont. How sweetly the moonlight feeds upon this bank. Here we miss it all night, and let the sound of music charm our ears. See, Jessica, the floor of heaven gleams with bright gold. Each star is like an angel singing endless joy. But we on earth are so much lower than the steps of all creation. We cannot hear sound from her, you see. Let's hear some music. Call out for the singer. Musician, are you there? <laughs> <laughs> Come out of the moonlight. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
success of her husband in Venice. Have they determined yet? Not yet, madam. Let's hope they will not be wrong. Ah, go in there, sir, and order the servants to prepare our rosary time, and let a fine table of food and drink be laid ready within an hour. Bassanio's ah, trumpet, madam. They are here. And I'm sure my Lord Graciano will be with him. Make haste and welcome them, Nerissa. Lorenzo, I thank you and Jessica for the care you've taken of my house and garden. We've had a delightful evening in the moonlight, gazing at the stars and listening to music. Indeed, Belmont is a heaven on earth. Yes, Madame. Welcome, my Lord. Thank you, dearest Paul. Yes, my friend Antonio, to whom I owe everything. Good Antonio, you are very welcome to our house. I have no words to express the gratitude and joy that fills my mind and heart. And so I simply offer you the comforts of my home and the love and welcome in our house. Nothing can please me more than seeing so many others happy in their love. What do you mean? You've given your ring to the judge's clock? But this a quarrel already? What's the matter? <laughs> Yashan has given away the ring I gave him. He promised to wear it forever. <laughs> but he's given it away to a mere clock. <laughs> oh, this man! He and his master both as a wife. Antonio's wife. I could deny the clerk's request. Oh, dearest Nerissa, I never thought it would distress you so much. You swore you'd wear it till the hour of your death, but you've given it away to uh, reach the clock. I'll never forgive you. That was very long of you, Graciano, to part so lightly with your first wife's gift. And to break a promise is unforgivable. I, too, gave my husband a ring, and he swore he'd never part with it. I know, beyond all doubt, he'd never part with, part with it. So he never gave his ring to anyone in such a way. Indeed, Graciano, you <laughs> made your wife very unhappy. If the same thing happened to me, I go quite mad with grief. What <laughs> shall I do? I'd better cut my hand off. I swear I lost a hand in doing that. <laughs> Let me explain. We offered the young judge the 3,000 sovereigns, but he wouldn't accept anything except Bassanio's ring, and after that. What thing did you give the judge? I hope it wasn't the one I gave you. <laughs> <laughs> it would be an even greater fault to tell you a lie, Portia. But you see, there is no ring on my finger now. So you two are utterly false of heart. Well, listen, I will never accept you as my husband until that ring is safely returned to your finger. No will I, Graciano, unless you get my ring back from that miserable claw. Sweet as the Portia, if only you knew how brilliant that young judge was, and if you knew how I willingly give him, give him the ding, you couldn't be so angry with me now. If you knew the virtue of that ring, or half the goodness of her that gave the ring, or if you knew the importance of your honor to keep the ring, you never gave the, gave the ring him. I don't think so. I don't think you gave it to the judge at all. I think you gave it to a woman. No! <laughs> I swear to you, Portia, I never gave it to a woman. It was a young doctor of law who the judge would say it was Antonio. If you'd been there and understood the circumstances, I'm sure you'd have agreed to give him the ring. Don't let the young judge come near this house. Since you have gave him my ring, I might give him my heart. 
fall in love with him, become his husband. And I'll marry that clerk instead of you, Graciano. <laughs> <laughs> Perhaps that's all we deserve for being so unfaithful to you both. <laughs> I am the unhappy cause of all this quarreling. Sir, I beg you, let nothing disturb the peace of your mind. You are very indeed welcome. Oh, sir. Please, forgive oh, this great wrong of mine. Why should I pardon such a sinful man? Dearest Portia, please listen. If you forgive me, I never break a promise again. I add my word to his. <laughs> On my honor, I swear that my good friend never breaks a face again. Very well, Antonio. I accept your words as security for Bassanio's promise to be faithful forevermore. Give him this ring. And tell him to keep it more carefully than the one I gave him before. Here, Bassanio, swear to keep this ring. Why, <gasps> oh, um, it's the same ring as I gave it to a woman, a uh, child. <laughs> The young, handsome judge is very close to my heart. And pardon me too, Graciano. The young clerk you gave my ring to slept in my bed last night. <laughs> and here's the ring you gave him. He gave it back to me. This is unbelievable. <laughs> That young judge, well, as well as I know myself. <laughs> do, not, do not look so amazed, all of you. Listen, the young judge was Portia in disguise, and his young clerk was Nerissa. I was the clerk, Graciano. And the Porsche was the judge. It's beyond belief. Lorenzo and Jessica will tell you we were absent from the house. Almost as long as you were. We followed you to Venice. And we've only just returned. See? He had gone, I wore. And here is mine. Wow, you, that young doctor. <laughs> <laughs> I never recognized you. Nerissa, so you are the uncrop. <laughs> now I understand everything. Yes, Dr. Barbara. Now you shall be my wife. <laughs> and I will marry a young clerk. Uh, don't let forget Lorenzo and Jessica. Well, Lisa, listen, tell them what was decided in the court. When the time comes, you and Jessica will inherit all of Sherlock's money and possessions. That news is like a gift from heaven. A letter for Antonio, madam. Oh, here is further good news to delight your hearts. Three of my fleets are safe and sound, not left in the storms. <gasps> they will soon be home in Paris! Oh, 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 a happy ending! A happy ending to a sad story, and a happy being to a new life! <coughs> Dear friends, I wish you all the joy in the world.
I could stay here forever. But time will not let me remain. I am here for a while only. But I must be on my way. Thank you.